Brandy Robinson. B R A N D I E R O B I N S O N. Yeah, Martin Weinberg, M A R T I N W E I N B E R G. That's right. It's very important for us. Um, the media has focused so much on all the males, the black males that have been slaughtered at the hands of police, but you don't hear so much about the females or it comes and it goes as quickly as it came. And what do you all hope to accomplish today? Of course, any of you all can answer these questions, but what do you all hope to accomplish today's rally? Um, I just, I, I think, like Brandy said, bringing attention. You, can, you, can, you don't have to lower your head. Oh, okay. You don't have to um, like Brandy said, bringing attention to uh, the lives of black women who have been uh, the victims of police violence. Um, I, I think that, uh, like she said, it's, it, it's gone unnoticed and it, it's in the media attention for a few seconds and then we're on to the next case. But um, and these cases are all are, 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 are a lot. Uh, different in terms of um, how uh, females are handled and um, mental illness as well. Just bring attention to mental illness and, and black females as well. Yeah, and, I mean, you notice that a lot of these high-profile cases involving black women, um, the nature in which they die, they're unseen often. So, you know, seeing video of George Floyd, Right. That, 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 that's right. We want transparency and accountability. Um, and uh, I'm planning on seeing the video with the family. I know they've seen it, but I just got in on the case. And so I want to look at it first and then, um, you know, we'll, we'll bring more attention to exactly what happened. Um, I think the accounts are different from what um, we read in the paper and from the internal review from than what the family um, has been told and, and what eyewitnesses as well that we've spoken to. Um, there's some difference, and so, um, yeah, you're right. Um, you know, just just any of these cases um, are very important. There's transparency and accountability. I think that's that's all for me. I didn't want to, you know, but unless you all have anything else to add, I'm, I'm good. Thank you so okay. much. My name is Corey Wilson. And can you spell it for me, please? Uh, K O R E Y W I L S O N. Okay. And are you the organizer for this rally? Um, I, I am the organizer. Would you like me to hold the mic? No, I'm fine. Okay. I am one of the organizers. I, this, the rally that is happening today um, happened in about 24 hours, which is really quick turnaround um, for an assembly. And so uh, it was a communal effort with uh, multiple organizations throughout uh, Huntsville and North Alabama. Um, I might have been a part of the spark maybe, but it's difficult for me to take uh, full credit for organizing today. Um, I had help from Angela Curry, um, Bernard Simonson, the, uh, the, Hunt, the, well, the, <clears throat> I had help from Bernard Simonson, um, the state president of the Alabama chapter of the NAACP. Um, I mean, there are so many people involved in this movement who have been organizing protests in Huntsville uh, since the, 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 the death of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor uh, that it's difficult for me to take full credit for being here today. Right, and talk about the purpose of you being here today. In 1963, in Birmingham, Alabama, there was a march called the Children's Crusade. There's a lot of young folks who marched with Dr. King um, for the right to vote, for the right to desegregate, to exist unmolested by police or other extrajudicial forces who would do harm to black people just because they existed. And <clears throat> the public safety commissioner of Birmingham at that time was Bull Connor. 
Um, and so Bull Connor is the man who authorized the sicking of dogs and water cannons on these young people who were at this protest. Um, my aunt and uncle were at that protest. Um, and so that protest mirrored, or to me the protest um, at the courthouse on June 1st mirrors the Children's Crusade. Um, the use of force that was used at that protest is unacceptable, and the people who need to be held responsible are Mark McMurray um, and Turner, the, 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 the Madison County Sheriff. Um, they need to help be held responsible. The officers involved need to be held responsible. They used potentially lethal munitions at lethal, um, they used potentially lethal munitions um, within lethal range, um, according to testimony by Rita uh, Burkholder. Um, and so the protest today is against police brutality and violence. Um, we are here to focus on uh, Crystal Ragland as well as Dana Fletcher and other um, victims of police violence and brutality. Um, I know that the Facebook group, the image says, say her name. Um, it is important to speak out uh, because the U.S. is very, very quick to remember the names of black men who are killed by police, but black women often get forgotten. And so it's important to me that we remember Crystal Ragland and Corin Gaines and Atiana Jefferson, uh, who, I mean, if you look at Breonna Taylor and Atiana Jefferson, they were in their homes when they were killed by police. Sandra Bland was pulled over and then taken to, to jail and nobody knows what happened. So for me, it's important to boost the volume of those stories and to make sure that the issue the lens through which we view the issue of police violence isn't just only against black men. Black women are victims of it as well, and their names and their stories deserve to be told and remembered. And today we are going to remember Crystal Ragland and Dana Fletcher. We're going to try to remember everybody, but we are certainly putting black women at the forefront today. Gotcha. And what exactly are you going to do? Are you going to, what's the program set? You're going to have a speech, or are you all going to March or what, what yeah, so the program set for today is that uh, as more people join and some key organizers that I'm expecting join, um, we're going to allow uh, different people to speak. Um, I think the plan is probably to hear from um, some of Crystal Raglan's family, uh, from Martin Weinberg, their attorney. Um, I will be speaking. I will see if uh, if Bernard Simonson would like to speak, and I believe that Angela Curry will also be here and speak. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Was there anything else that you wanted to add before we wrap up? Yeah. Um, when the call to combat injustice happened in communities in Madison County, in Huntsville, in Madison City, the citizenry answered. They came out and they spoke with a clear voice that in these cities, in Huntsville, in Madison, in the county more broadly, that it is unacceptable for the police to use the type of force that we have seen uh, seemingly escalating in recent years. Um, the police are funded by taxpayer dollars. That means that every bullet that enters the catalog and exits the gun, we paid for. And so they should be here to preserve and protect life and not end it. And I understand that there are instances where use of force, where use of lethal force is necessary. Um, we are not here to be anti-police necessarily. Uh, I am here specifically to discuss uh, the policies and the policy makers, um, which is why I said that uh, the Madison County Sheriff, Huntsville City Police Chief, uh, Madison City Police Chief all need to be held responsible. Uh, we need to update whatever our current standards of use of force are um, and ensure that taxpayers are not being 
are not being taken are not being taken from their families and their friends when de-escalation could be an option. Dylan Roof, he went into a church in South Carolina. He had a semi-automatic weapon. He killed, I don't even remember how many people he killed. The police somehow managed for this white man to apprehend him, take him to McDonald's and then drive him to jail. And if you're telling me that four officers could not uh, potentially de-escalate if there was even a need to de-escalate with Dana Fletcher or that Crystal Raglan was such a, a threat that de-escalation and apprehension uh, was not an option, then please explain to me how people like Dylan Roof, um, people like Dylan Roof who have fair complexions end up being able to go home to their loved ones after they commit horrible atrocities.